Hey, welcome to another video from SQL Maestros. This video is based on a conversation I was having with someone on LinkedIn. It so happened that a few days back, I started off with something called as SQL Notes by AB. If you go uh, to LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter and search on hashtag hash AB SQL Notes, you may get a few short crisp learning. So I'm kind of penning them down. I put it on these social channels. And someone read my uh, note on LinkedIn and that specific note was about thread pool weight type. And I got a question that uh, someone, that gentleman is encountering a SPID blocking itself. So uh, a screenshot was also given and probably the screenshot was the output of uh, sys DMOS waiting tasks. And what was shown in that output was a session ID, let's say 35 was blocking itself. Now, typically in a blocking scenario in SQL Server, you have one SPID blocking another SPID and which is quite uh, visible from the output of waiting task because that's a, a blocking scenario and a lock wait type uh, being applied there. But in this particular scenario, you have a SPID blocking itself. So I thought, let me record a video and kind of demystify what exactly happens. So here we are with the demo. Let's get started. So I have put this demo into three parts. Part one, I will show you LCKMS, then page IO latch weight type, and then CX packet weight type. So first let's get started with the most basic one, LCKMS. Now, as I said, you have a, a SPID being blocked by another SPID, and that's a typical blocking scenario. So let's open up these two queries. So first blocked query and then LCKMS. Let's create a very simple blocking scenario. We are using AdventureWorks 2016. I'm going to begin a transaction and update a table person dot person. Let's do that. And note that we begin the transaction, but we are neither committing nor rolling back, which means this is an in-flight transaction. And you know with this query what's going to happen, a lock is going to be placed on this record or the, or the number of records that match this criteria, business entity ID one, and coincidentally it's just one record and an exclusive lock is going to be placed. Now this lock is alive because the transaction is still running. Now, if you go to another user, which is another window and we try to select from person dot person, you know what's going to happen for such queries. Um, SQL now needs a shared lock here for, you know, to access the row and shared and exclusive locks are incompatible. Now this creates a, a simple blocking scenario. Let's jump over to the other window and try to monitor by um, uh, investigating this DMOS waiting tasks where you have the wait type like LCKMS. Now there are many wait types related to a uh, lock. So they, they all have a prefix LCKM. So that's what I'm doing. I'm selecting all the records from waiting tasks and I'm filtering on LCKMS and there you go. You have session ID 80, which is this one 80 where we have the select query and that is being blocked. If you just scroll down to the right, you have the blocking session ID being blocked by 81. Now, the DMOS waiting tasks, this DMV will give you real time information about all the tasks that are currently waiting on one or other or more wait types. Now, this is a quasine SQL server at this point. This is, these are the only two workloads that are running right now. So, uh, I am only seeing one record there, but you know, if you just do a select star demo as waiting task in a production server, you'll see high flying records there with you know a lot of uh, overwhelming data coming out. But in this scenario, you can see SPID 80 is being blocked by 81. This DMV is specifically not really meant to troubleshoot a blocking scenario. And of course, this demo is not about that. Uh, this DMV will give you a lot of weight information like what is SPID 80 waiting on? It's waiting on a wait type called LCKMS, which stands for lock mode shared resource address, blocking task address, so on and so forth. Now, additionally, apart from a lot of information related to wait class, you're also getting this additional information about blocking session ID, blocking execution context ID and blocking task address. This, you will get this information related to blocking only if this is a blocking scenario only if the weight type is one of the lock weight types. That's the point I'm trying to make. In case the weight type is something else, a non lock weight type, then probably many of these fields are going to be null. So this is to set the foundation to clear this concept about a blocking scenario 
a couple of these lock weight types and then you see the blocking session ID. So let's roll back this transaction and close these windows. And now let's take another weight type, which is not a lock weight type. For example, let's take page IO latch weight type. Okay. And let's open the script here. Let's see this one. Now let's go and check demo as waiting task where weight type is page IO latch. And do we have anything going on? So right now again, quasine SQL server, nothing is running. So you have all empty result sets coming in. Great. Now let's add some users. So I'm going to add 10 users who are going to stress SQL Server with some IO workload. Let's go back to SQL here and run our diagnostic query. And you can see if I run this a couple of times, of course, you will see a couple of records. Now let's stop the workload. All of them, all these session IDs, you can see 76, 78, 74, so on and so forth. All of them waiting on wait type page IO latch SH, which stands for page IO latch shared. Now, this is not a deep dive into wait types, but the point here is what about these fields now? All of them are null. So you can see blocking session ID, execution context ID, and blocking task address. All of them are null simply because page IO latch wait type is has nothing to do with blocking or locking. This is a different class of wait type. That's the point I was trying to make. Okay. Now let's uh, close this one. Now let's come to the crux of the demo, which is this wait type CX packet, which is not a locking wait type again, but then this is what the gentleman on LinkedIn gave me a screenshot of where you could actually see blocking session ID with this wait type. So let's try to see what goes on here. So I'm going to open monitor CX packet and let's just simply um, investigate OS waiting task with filter on CX packet. Let's go and run this again, quasine SQL server, no output. Now let's stress SQL server with some CX packet wait type. So here is a very simple query that I'm running in a loop just to generate some uh, wait type. I will we'll come back to this query again. Let's go and execute this. It's running. I jump over here and execute this. Now let's first go and stop this, the workload, go back here. So now what you could see here is, let's say session ID 74 is waiting on a wait type CX packet. The first thing you are going to observe is in previous wait types, when we were, we were doing locking or page IO latch, you could only see a unique wait type. Like you could see 74, 75, 76, but here you see multiple entries and all of them are session ID 74. And this may take you back suddenly that, oh, you have so many records and all are session ID 74, simply because this workload that's running in session ID 74 is being parallelized, which means this session ID 74 has eight threads, which is evident from the fact that you have now execution context ID here. The execution context ID in previous examples were null or, or zero or whatever, but now it's one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, because you have eight threads. This query, this workload is running in parallel. And all of them are waiting on wait type CX packet. We'll come to that in a moment. But the real thing here is, look at the blocking session ID now, 74. You have the blocking task address also. So the point here is 74 blocking 74. And let's just make this a bit more evident. So what's that session ID? So I say session ID and I'll put blocking uh, session ID, comma, there you go. So let's just see this a little more clearly. So you have, oops, I'm going to run this once more and go back here and execute this again. Come back here, stop, okay. There you go, so you see session ID 74 and blocking session ID 74. This is what was the cause of confusion for that gentleman as to this is not a blocking scenario, so why am I seeing it? And when this is very long running, you would see some kind of like, you would assume that there is a blocking scenario and unfortunately people in SQL Server world think like, like if the blocking scenario is going too long, just go and kill the session. So you would say kill 74 and everything gets resolved. But as I said, this is not a blocking scenario. This is a very classic, simple case of parallelism which is 74 a query, uh, which is running in session ID 74 is running in parallel. And because the work is distributed across multiple threads, they wait on each other for their completion. 
It is just as simple as that. And when a child thread is waiting for a sibling to complete, they encounter CX packet wait type, which stands for class exchange packet. That's as simple as that. And DMOS waiting task will give you this information that, okay, one of the threads is just waiting for the other thread to complete. And that's why you have the blocking session ID 74 here. So when you see a blocking, when you see a spit blocking itself, do not assume that this is a blocking scenario. Look at the wait type. And that's just an exception with this kind of wait type related to parallelism. To kind of just expand this further, if I just take this query, uh, the one, this is the query, select star from sales order detail, order by line total descending, and I turn on actual execution plan and execute this query, just to show you that you will see in the execution plan that this is a parallel plan, or rather a plan with a lot of parallel operators. And let's go to the to extreme right on clustered index scan, right click, go to properties, and you can see all the eight threads in action here. If you go to the actual number here, let's zoom in a bit, and you can see thread one to thread eight, and you can see the distribution of rows. And one thing which is quite evident here is that the distribution of data, the distribution of work amongst all the parallel thread is not equal. And that could be one of the causes as to why one thread completes first or before than others. So if you see thread six is just dealing with 6,000 rows while thread seven is dealing with 18,000 rows. So that's the kind of uh, difference, uh, siblings waiting for each other. So this is not a blocking scenario. This is how the architecture of parallel workload in SQL Server is. So do not kill this workload. It might be a long running scan that's happening, which is running in parallel. Well, good enough. Maybe it's an expensive query and SQL Server has decided to parallelize. Uh, well, this quick video is not good enough for a deep dive into CX packet or the parallel execution architecture of SQL Server, but I think it just opens up uh, some discussion points and at least demystifies as to what that gentleman and others would be seeing in DIM OS waiting tasks, specifically this one. Hope you like this video and hope it clears a few concepts. Remember, go to sqlmaestros.com and become a free member so you can get access to all these scripts. And when you become a free member, you also get access to our video lobby. Uh, not all videos are available on YouTube, but our video lobby on sqlmaestros.com has many SQL tutorials and you get access to all of them absolutely free, along with a lot of other learning resources. So make sure you become a member do subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and colleagues if you like it, and follow me on Twitter, A underscore Bunsell. Any question, post it there. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.